Yo. What's up, Alex? How are you, man? All good. I had, a, I had a chatty Kathy on the other line. Oh, you're all good. Oh, how are things? Things are good. No complaints. Things are Great. all good. Great. Yeah. All right, my friend. We're about to take the next step in the journey. Excited for it. Good. Um, what we're going to do is just tie a bow on KT real quick. I'm going to ask you four real easy questions, just kind of about your overall experience. Yeah. And then from there, I want to preview mastery, get some realignment with our goals, where we're headed. I want to talk bell sizes uh, and just overall make sure you feel like you got clarity in the plan. Awesome. All right. So. Double A, six weeks, in, 16 weeks through KT. Uh, give me some wins, some results. Uh, how was the experience? The experience is great. Um, you know, I think biggest part of it is consistency um, and, you know, having it really kind of laid out from a workout perspective. I thought, you know, the uh ramping up and ramping down weekly of kind of the you know the different exercises and how it went over it was awesome so you know i'm probably down about 22 to 23 pounds now but more so than 16 of these like 18 weeks i started trying to get into it before we started probably like 25 really strong um you know i stayed the course like you know i i did the pr on the on the 40 kg but i don't know if i had started that three weeks more would i be even a little bit stronger i ran the program the way it was but saw I mean, I remember the first time I even did two reps on just swings with a 40 kg. I was just like, I'm, and then the last one I was doing on the minute, every minute. And I wasn't gassed. I mean, I wasn't, it wasn't not there, but it was a good, it was a seven or an eight. Like you said, it would be like, you know, you just kind of stair stepped in. So it'll gradually grew strength. I feel great, you know, on a daily basis, love the body comp. You know, still you get a little something you want more. So still mm -hmm. trying to kind of, you know, obviously why we're doing mastery is, mm -hmm. you know, this is more of a lifestyle change. I am mm -hmm. ornery as hell if I don't get up at five and work out. And I got to squeeze one in, in the evening. Like if, and I think I only missed one day on the actual day where it was actually week sixteen. I had to work out on a Sunday. Like I was really good. Traveled with my bells if I was driving. If I was on planes, I tried to make all my trips fly out Tuesday after lunch and come back Wednesday night so I could get my Monday Tuesday in miss a Wednesday and then get a Thursday, Friday. So, uh, you know, committed to that. I thought the diet kicking off was super simple. Mm -hmm. um, I was probably in like, I'd say 90 range. and know we probably gotta be at 95. I probably could have dropped a little bit. Some of that is just work travel, probably mm -hmm. the back half of it compared to the first half just got hectic, but still out at restaurants, portion control, which you can and cannot do. Sure. Uh, was, uh, you know, just leaning on proteins as much as I can uh, was a lot easier, but you know, the program's been fantastic, you know, like I, I love it. And, you know, well, kettlebells are from here on out for me. Like, it's just, I don't, I don't even need anything else than maybe a dip bar, you know, something like that or a pull up bar, but besides yeah. that, I'm good with just, with just kettlebells. So awesome. It's awesome. In, in the past, Alex, what were some of your obstacles, frustrations in regards to health, fitness, nutrition? Well, nutrition, I probably was just too much crash dieting or trying to do other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, obstacles from workout perspective was having something simply laid out. You know, you go to the gym and you're like, oh, it's it's back and buys days. And you're on this machine for a minute. What am I going to do? Even if I would write it out, mm -hmm. I didn't have enough of a progression. I think mentally, I always thought I was 25. And I was like, oh, yeah, I used to lift this amount. And then I didn't. So I tampered down. But like, I didn't have five weeks of it. I had what I wrote down for that afternoon. Right. I wasn't like, okay, well, this week I'm doing back this exercise at this weight for this many reps. And then three weeks from now, my goal is to be at this weight. You know, it just, there wasn't enough progression. Um, and without that kind of progression, you just do it for a little bit and stop. Or I just start running because it was the easiest thing with young kids. I could just yeah. pay on a dime. Like, hey, do I have 20 minutes to my wife? I could jump out the front door, go on a run. Um, but I was into being kind of skinny fat with that, you know, when building up muscle, even just with push ups and stuff. So, the progression, I think, was the best thing because you're seeing the results in the weight and you're seeing the results in the strength at the same time. So, like, and that's where you get to buy and go. And now you're kind of like, shit, I could be 180, 205. Like, why stop there? I could just keep cranking this thing out because you know, well, there's a roadmap. If I'm disciplined enough to follow it, I can get kind of mm -hmm. wherever I want to get. 
So that was the biggest thing I didn't have in the past was probably a really laid out, well thought progression that you could follow over a good time period. That was yeah. simple too. The simplicity of the exercises can be sometimes monotonous. Mm -hmm. uh, and it would be different. Some days I wouldn't, I'd be like through like six, you know, sets of swings of like ooh, four more left and just swinging this damn thing. I just want to get to get ups. But then some days I'd be doing, I'd be like swinging. I just, like, shit, I'd just do 20 swings if I could. I mean, I didn't, but I'm like, hey, I'm feeling good today. <laughs> swings. And I get on the get ups, I get to like three of them, and I'm like, damn, the get ups today are just, you know. Originally, I liked get ups way more. Now I actually enjoy the swings a little bit more. Interesting. Um, so that kind of, you know, yeah. it really depends on the time of day. Yeah. Swings are hard in the morning when I work out like at 5 a.m. Uh -huh. Because it's just like, even if I spend 10 minutes trying to get loose, it's still just swinging something heavy first yep. thing. And get ups kind of, I would even some mornings do my get up before my swing, just knowing like how I was bending and moving would loosen me up for the swings. Mm -hmm. But whenever I had afternoon workouts, I don't know if it's just a day, you know, everything's loosened up from walking around. I mean, I sit at the office, but I got a standing desk as well. And I'll, you know, walk at lunch and stuff. But I felt like when I did swings in the afternoon, I was 15% stronger. It was just like kind of the, ready to go. So, um, you know, the simplicity of it was great. Uh, still wish I was a little more mobile in the hips, but I'm working on that with like deep squats. But mm -hmm. I kind of have like a low, low stool that like I just hit now to kind of keep me from getting too far down and, and yeah. weak. So I know. And when I go, I'm below parallel. I'm just not, you know, ass to grass. So, right. um, yeah, simplicity of exercises and progression. I didn't have that in the past. So it's probably more about what I got than what I didn't have. Thinking back to when you were contemplating on doing KT or not, what was it that pushed you over the edge to invest in yourself, invest in the program? I probably followed Grant for like seven months. Like, and I had bought some kettlebells and like, but like he talks about it on some posts, like there's the flow and it's the same stuff. It's like, well, I don't know how much I should swing or how yeah. much I shouldn't. And I was just sitting there one night and it was just kind of like uh, either, you know, stop talking about it or just, you got to do it. And I knew as we were texting back and forth, I was like, this thing's going to be expensive. I was like, I just knew it in my head. I was like, no, it's about cool 600 bucks. Here we go. Like, I just kind of, I just told myself, I was like, whatever is going to be here, 38 going on 39, like you need to give it all you got and see if you can kind of get to where you want to get. And then if not this, you know, then what? So my big thing was just like my kids and wanted to stay mm -hmm. motivated. And I was just kind of, I had that shoulder surgery last year. And I was like, all right, I made excuses for a long time the message of like busy father, you can squeeze it in kettlebell simplicity, everything just kind of, it, it definitely yep. was speaking to me. I know it might not be for everyone, but the message hit home with, with me and, and what I was looking for. So, um, and then once you, once you sign up financially, like I'm not going to waste the workout, you know, and I'm not going to cheat myself out of, you know, a diet just to make something feel better. So I, I think a big thing was just the way it was positioned for someone with my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. If you had a buddy who was on the fence about joining KT, yeah. what would you say to him? Look at this. <laughs> I do. I got one of my best friends is like, we've always probably been the same size. And I, and I, he was four doors down for me. Honestly, we've been my friends since we were 14. And I sent him like grants information. I'm like, just follow this guy, dude. I was like, I'm not gonna pressure you to spend the money because I don't know, you know, his wife would dream later or not. Yeah. He's like, how? Oh. He's like, you know, I, he's probably still 25 pounds heavier than me. And, you know, he, we were on a playing golf like two weekends ago. And he's like, dude, you might have lost a shit ton of weight. I was like, dude, just don't eat that. Eat this and just swing heavy bells like four days a week. Like, it's not, if you're willing to be disciplined. It's not as hard as you think. Like that's honestly what it was. And yeah, I've done it before. I was a you know a big athlete, and then I ballooned up in college when I stopped playing sports. And then I knew it really wasn't that much diet. I just got much more active, and I got back down. I mean, to like two twenty, but I was probably thirty pounds heavier than that at one point. I was twenty years ago, so I've seen the results. But what I'm seeing here is that it's the lifestyle thing I talked about. Like even this week, like I mean, these light swings I'm throwing. The, 70 pounds. I didn't go all the way to the moderate. So I was like, I don't want to lose any strength. Like you kind of have it. And it's not that hard just to wake up and do this four days a week. And it's not that hard just to, you know, oh, well, the kids had some cake left over, not to like go in the kitchen and eat it. Like when mm -hmm. you, once you've got the results, 
I mean, I borderline like opened up something I shouldn't eat and then just like threw it in the trash can. My wife looked at me, she's like, really? I was like, yeah, I had like a moment of weakness there for like 10 seconds, but like I saw the results in the mirror this morning. Like I'm just not doing it. And I'm not perfect with that. Some days you're still, sure. you know, it has to be livable in lifestyle, but like, right. you know, I, uh, what was it yesterday? It was kind of like a not, no, I don't work out yesterday. No, yesterday and this week was like a tampered down day. So I got up in the morning and I rode like, or yeah, I rode the Peloton for like 45 minutes. I burned like 800 calories, which is still a good workout. And I got home last night. Well, I said, what are you gonna do? I was like, I'm gonna go on like a walk for an hour. She was like, you rode this morning. I was like, yeah, but you know what? I had a cookie at lunch. So like I'm walking for an extra hour and a half. Like, you know, it's just, you get in a mind where you don't want to give an inch. Yeah. I tell my buddy, he's got to get to that. You got to get to that mindset. If you're, if it's, if you're at the point you want to do it, there's a solution for you, but you can't half-ass it. You know, so I, I've sent a couple guys that mm-hmm. I'm friends with, like, hey, yeah. here's the program. They've asked, and I'm like, here's the program, worth every damn penny. You know, if you ask me, if but you gotta, you gotta commit. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter what the videos say or what they do. You gotta, you gotta follow the work. You gotta be all in. Oh yeah, I, I can't appreciate see, that. I keep saying all the time. I, I forgot what I heard somebody say online one time. You can't negotiate your goals. Like if your goals do this, <laughs> you don't negotiate with yourself. You don't negotiate with anybody else. You know, you, mm-hmm. you don't negotiate your goals. The goal's the goal. Because it's easy to be with yourself. It's easy to say, yeah, I'll do a little bit more tomorrow. Or, man, I didn't do that. Like, I don't have, and I used to do that all the time. Now, I I don't negotiate with myself at all. Like, that voice doesn't doesn't get into the conversation. It is, it is what it is. I love that. I'm going to use that. Appreciate that, Alex. That's yeah. good stuff, my friend. That yeah. is great. That is great. And I will say, too, I don't know if you get into it, but, like, not only the progression, but like, I was nervous the first two weeks, just not knowing, like it's all uh, like, whenever I go to a gym, I know where there's mirrors in a gym. Cause yeah, for me, it's not vanity. It's like form and stuff. So like the coaching and the videos and how quickly I'll turn stuff around and say like, Hey, you're off kind of, you know, here or there, or wherever else uh, is, is huge. Cause mm-hmm. You know, when I the first thing I thought was like, I'm going to swing this thing and just throw my back out in like four weeks. So I was like, yeah. that's all I was worried about was like, I'm going to start this thing and I'm going to tear up my back or I wasn't worried about the get ups as much. I just thought like that hinge. And then when you really kind of start to realize, well, you're not curving your back, you know, it's all in your your hips and your hams and your quads and kind of it was a lot of good. That two week ramp up time of all the check ins and coaching just made you feel kind of more confident. And yeah. then you did like tweak my back one time i was like that wasn't bad form that was my hips are super tight i've been sitting all day i didn't loosen them up and they pulled on my glutes and my glutes pulled on my lower back and i felt like you know something was out of place but i knew it wasn't me doing something bad sure. and it had the proper instruction so uh, that's the same yeah. thing now i got a little 30 out and i was watching some videos on my cleans and like up and pulling towards you and getting yeah i'm already trying to make sure i got the form right for mastery and the new exercises uh and digging around on stuff so uh that's a huge part of it though. The coaching, mm-hmm. like the community and like our touch bases is, is big. You don't just mm-hmm. get out every day with your workouts. Yeah. And I told the guys about that too. I was like, yeah, man, you got like a live coach. Like mm-hmm. that was a big selling point. I remember that in the beginning, uh, some of your injury history and I was mm-hmm. like, okay, this is a, and it, that's the truth for a lot of guys, but yeah, uh, it's really hard to be consistent if you're training through pain. You know, yeah, hundred percent. So- really understanding I, I will say i have never lost as much weight and got as strong as pain-free like you could put that as a tagline like when pain like outside of one time tweak in my back i was never like you know like the first day back in the gym and like you bench and you're just like the next day you can't like i never was just sore as hell hmm. i'd have good workouts but you guys said eight or seven or eights and i'm a bigger guy i could probably be throwing a little bit more weight than i am like I know, like when I'm doing it, I was like, ah, I'm probably sure. like I knew I probably the 40 kg I probably could have got a couple weeks before, but I was like, I'm just staying with it because you know, like you said, when you got your 56, I guess PR in Arizona, you're like, I hadn't done anything over 32 in like months or whatever. It's like I was just drilling it, drilling it, drilling it, and I was doing 53 get ups this morning as like my decrease, but I was like, I forgot what I was counting to in my head, but I was making myself go like as slow as humanly possible. It just kind of like. Yeah, it was just as exhausting at the end of five than doing heavy 70 pounders. So, I mean, it was just kind of like make it take a while. So, um, yeah, and no setbacks. I know a lot of guys in the chat had setbacks. I didn't, I didn't have any setbacks. Great, 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 great. Um, you mentioned one thing that I really liked um, 
aside from the not negotiating with yourself, um, but the idea of maintaining progress. Mm -hmm. I have some guys that they get to the end of week 16 and they take their foot off the gas. So I'm going to encourage you to keep your foot on the gas. Oh, my goal is 190 now. Like I got the 205. My goal is like 190 in weight and strength and getting up. No, I'm not. Don't let up yet. I'm actually kind of bummed out when y'all said this thing goes 52 weeks. And at the end, you get all the workouts. And I'm like, well, can you just keep doing it for another 52 weeks? Like, you know, how do you just stay in the community and keep yeah. doing it like in perpetuity? Because like we're, this fits my lifestyle. This fits yeah. We're, we're going to have some other options. We haven't had a guy get there yet. All right, I'll we get one there. Guy getting I'll, pretty I'll be the close. first guy. I'll get there. Yeah, we got a couple of guys that are close that are up on that full year of mastery mark. Yeah, um, but there will be some options. Cool, yeah. awesome. We we just want our guys to know, hey, we, you know, we have some stuff for you, but uh, we have had a lot of guys say, hey, well, what if I do want to keep going, or uh, yeah. maybe you know we're, we're kind of tossing around this uh, group model as well. So that's cool. There'll be some, there'll be some stuff. Um, but for now, let's keep the goal, the goal and let's keep pushing. Yeah, for sure. Cause you're going to start to get to the point where you will lose enough body fat and you're going to, instead of just getting smaller, you're going to really start getting the, like, see the fun stuff, like the muscles popping, the vascularity yeah. abs yeah. that's coming. Yeah. But it's just like, there's a lot of body fat that has to get lost first. Oh, yeah. For sure. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I got shoulders, I got arms, I got pecs. Yeah, absolutely. But right now your body's still in burning the excess mode. Mm -hmm. No, I know. I just want to burn. I, I'm with you. Yeah, 100%. I feel That's like I'm close enough to, you know, when you're when you're 16 weeks from now, that seems like it's so far away that you're like, I could never get that. And then now that like a chunk of that's gone, it's like, oh, I could get there. Like mm -hmm. I could 100% get there. I just gotta keep it going. As we shift into mastery here into the first bridge, we're gonna be working the one arm swing right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And then in week four, we're gonna work the double clean. Okay. You're not gonna see any of the double cleans until mastery strength one, but we're gonna teach them and coach you up on them starting week four of the bridge. Okay. So you're gonna have week four, five, six to practice the double clean. And then you'll actually see it in your program that following Tuesday. Okay. The one arm swing though, we're actually gonna start training that the very first week. So and you're gonna start mind. seeing the one arm swing in your program the second week. Okay, so next week we'll kind of train one arms. Yep. And then the week after that, we'll actually start seeing them in the workout. Yep. Okay. And it's going to be a progression. So week one, it's gonna be all 10 sets of 10 with your very heavy two hand swing bell. Mm -hmm. The next week, it'll be eight sets with your two hand swing and then one and one single arm. Oh, the okay. Week, no, it'll go six. Know. Yeah. So you'll just keep adding more and more volume to that one arm swing bell. Okay. Traditionally, uh, whatever your moderate two hand swing bell was in KT, so maybe yeah. the 24K. Yeah, 53. Yeah. Three, yeah. That'll, that'll be your starting one arm swing bell. Okay. With the one arm swing bell, I generally recommend taking smaller jumps. So instead of going eight kilos between bell sizes with the one arm, I like smaller 4K jumps. I'm going to need to get some tweener sizes in, like a 28. Correct. A 20, yeah, 28 kg. So you might need a 28. And then what about, then I would have a 32, but should I get like a, a, th like a 36? For down I mean, it's not something that you're going to need right away. Okay, I'll wait on it. The 28 would be the only thing I would probably say to grab. Okay. Because the from a one arm swing from the 24 to 32, it's a big jump. That's kind of like the three bells, like through this program. Yeah. 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 So just sense. taking if it's the same it, as that all the way to a 40, then that would make sense. Yeah. Just more instead of eights. Exactly. Okay. Um, and then for our double bell work, you know, you're a pretty strong guy. I would probably recommend a pair of 20s or 24s. I think the 20s could be a good place to Is start. 20 to 44 pounders? Correct. All right, I have one of those. So I, I have both, one of each. So it's either. So you might want to think about getting another 20 and a 24. Okay. So you would potentially need three bells, 20, 24, 28. 
Do I need anything bigger than the 40 for now? Well, fine, dude, the swing is 10 for 10. It's still a hell of a workout going to a 44. Like I know as we start working on snatches and cleans, like it's probably not as much like 44 coming into work there. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's a need for it right now. Cool. Down, down the road. Sure. Yeah. Um, I need to find know, a gym around here who has bells. So like when I want to go try something at that point, I can, but it's not like, you know, $280 for one that I swing once a if, if you're feeling like 10 sets of 10 on the minute with the 40 is easy, yeah. then I would say you need another bell. Yeah. It's not easy. It's a workout, but it's just an obtainable work. It's a good burn. Yeah. Then I would say it's still a six. Then, yeah. You know, right now it's an eight. You know, right? Yeah. Wear that bell out, I would say a little bit. Um, and then in terms of progressing your PR with your get up, it'll be all right. We did a single with the 40. Our next step is going to be the yeah, double. Yeah, we're that thing out. Yeah, you know, triple with the forty. Then you, you hit a triple with the forty. Okay, we probably need a bigger bell. Yeah, that makes sense too. In the bridge, uh, there's going to be days where most days you're going to work get ups with all three bell sizes. So they'd be doing like a uh, maybe a triple with your moderate, a double uh, with your heavy, and a single with your very heavy. That sounds like a workout. Yeah. And there'll be other days where you only do a single with each bell, single moderate, single heavy, single very heavy. And on those days, if you're feeling good, those are days you're gonna to try to PR. Okay. If you're feeling it, that might be like a double, a double 40 type day. Okay. You're also gonna have other two days of the week where you're, you're just gonna work your 32K swing. On the minute, it's gonna start with eight sets of 10. And over the six weeks, we're gonna build up to 18 sets of 10 on the minute. Nice. So we're going to kind of just work this endurance component. Yeah. Okay. Just for the bridge. And then when we get to the next 16 uh, week program, that's going to be much more all strength focused. Okay. More specifically building the one arm swing. Okay. So you're going to see that one arm swing progression uh, along with another get up progression in there. With the get up progression, not so much in the bridge, but when we get to mastery strength one, we might want to think about, Moving just to your moderate up to the 28 at that point. Okay. 28, 32, 40. Awesome. Next week, let's do some uh, one arm swing work together, Alex. What do you like that week? Uh, the next two weeks are my only travel weeks. And then I don't travel again for a long time. So let me see when my flight is. It's let me look at something real quick. I just want to make sure, sure. I have okay. So I fly out. Tuesday at 12 o'clock noon. Okay, so I could do Monday afternoon or early Tuesday morning. Yeah, why don't we do a, a Monday afternoon? Sure, that works. Uh, like five Eastern. Five Eastern is great. What is that? That is. Um, oh, damn. Weekly sales marketing. How about I got kindergarten orientation at six o'clock that night for my son. So I'm probably gonna have to do a couple of things. What about like 4.30? Does that work? 4.30 uh, Eastern? Yeah, like 30 minutes before I was cut out of the office a little early on Monday. That's great. Okay. I don't know why all of a sudden like everything in my life got booked within like these two weeks and I'm trying to... Sorry. Now, this is the important stuff. The next week I'm traveling, so I'm driving, so all my stuff comes with me. So yeah. that's the fun part. I love uh, parking garage workouts now. Like, there's not a better sense of accomplishment than being in, like, a freezing cold parking garage at, like, 6 a.m. And, like, people drive by, like, who's this one to take? It's like, that's right. That's right. I'm putting in the work. It's a very, very good Saturday. There's nothing better than not wanting to do something and doing it. Like, waking up and being like, ugh. But honestly, I don't have many days like that. And if I am, it's just because I'm tired. Um, from like sleep. So I was going to ask at the end of this, if you guys recommend any like 
pre-workout stuff historically I, I don't like this morning i was just drinking coffee in between swings like at like 5 15 i'm just kind of sipping coffee swing sip coffee but i don't know if you recommend any pre-workout stuff or i mean yes and no like if traditionally i'm much more of a coffee guy yeah but i i mean i do have some in my house where yeah. maybe it's later in the day and i maybe i drink all my coffee but i still need a little something else yeah like have a little half a scoop or something yeah okay it's yeah it's right now the only the only yeah. thing i'm taking at all is just i do two scoops of native uh, what is it called ascent protein like na a native ascent protein i do two scoops of that every morning which is like 40 grams of protein and a smoothie and that's like my breakfast with like a banana and some blueberries and that thing's been so that's the only like real kind of supplement I've been taking just to get my yeah. protein. And, um, and I've never really read up enough on all the other things in a stack, right? Like, you know, there's a zillion and I'm just like, I don't know enough about this stuff. So I'm not taking any of it. I just don't think you need it yet. Yeah. Like when guys are doing the things they should be doing and they're getting the result, like don't mess with that formula. Yeah. Like keep banging it. If we hit a plateau, okay, let's see what's going on. Yeah. You know, maybe we need to tinker with uh, nutrition a little bit. Maybe we're going to take some 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 subs to kind of break through this plateau a little bit. Yeah. When things are moving, now it's just it's like don't don't mess with it. Perfect. We'll keep it rolling then. Because truthfully, like supplements, um, they're obviously highly marketed, right? Big time. They they only really benefit the guys and gals that are doing everything else right. And then on top of that, they, they're only the, the thing that accounts for maybe like a 5% difference. And that's, and that's not it's worth like, it. Yeah, you don't just take a little bit of creatine and get strong. It's for the guy who's knocking everything else out. Mm -hmm. getting in there. So no, that's right. Like you said, I still got plenty of other things to lose. Just staying on my protein. And uh, yeah, I say kind of coffee ready. So, yeah, I just, yeah, I have a hard time recommending stuff to guys when they're, we're getting a great result already. It's just like, no, this, let's keep going. If we start slowing down, okay, let's give the body a little, little something to, to get us over the hump. Cool. Awesome. All right. Alex, I'll see you Monday. And well, before we're gonna, we do it, we're going to dial in that one arm swing. Awesome. Rock. All righty. Thanks, bud. Have a great week. Thank you, Alex. You too. See ya. See ya. Recording and